here in the Post Classics, brought to you by Electronet Services. And I guarantee that when Arthur Foster organised this first race 20 years ago, he didn't expect to see this many bikes on the main street here at Greymouth. But that's what we've got. And number 24 has got the best of the starts. And this is Chris McMeekin on the Suzuki GS1000. And looked like going with him was 57. And on Black Betty, that's Neil Batchelor on the CBX 550. And there as well was Graham Russell on the Eddie Lawson replica Kawasaki. And that bike is a real picture. There it is with the big black, uh, should I say, the big square number plate on the front of it, number 54. That's Russell. But it's McMeekin in the front. Neville Hughes is in there as well on the 72. So we'll have a look as they get themselves sorted out in this first lap. Well, McMeekin, we've seen him do this in the previous post-classic race, and that is he starts to get a bit of a lead, but I think he's having a few handling problems because he's a bit timid through the corners, and that's going to bring him back to the rest of the field, and you'll see that very shortly. Neil Batchelor won't want to give this up without a fight. He's sitting in second place at the moment. Then it's bike number 72, Neville Hughes. But just maybe with a bit much grunt is the 24 of Chris McMeekin. All the way from the deep south of Invercargill, working his way down through the smoke-free straight and out onto the uh, Greymouth Car Centre straight now. So as we've mentioned before, essentially most of the turns right-handed. So this is the first left-hander, this is the Grey Ford corner, and they'll head down past, uh, well, toward the Union Hotel, and then they'll turn right again into Leonard Street. You see the tyres and the... Uh, the big straw bale bags there, they're filled with plastic milk bottles and they work as a cushioning device should anyone have a bit of a problem. So there is Neil Batchelor, I think he's getting a little bit closer on Black Betty. That's the affectionate name that he gives his uh, CBX 550 Honda. He's starting to run down Chris McMeekin. And you have a look at McMeekin through the corners, he's just a little bit more timid than uh, Batchelor. There they go through turn number one. This is bike number 68. Now this is a 1981 LC 350 Yamaha. And that's uh, Daryl Lawson at the wheel. Oh, I beg his pardon, Daryl Dawson. As we go back to the front runners, Batchelor trying once again just to get a little bit closer. Another right hand turn there. Batchelor a little bit better in the rights as they work their way through. This is the post classics. And the post classics split up into nine year age groups. They start off with pre-63, pre-72s. A lot of these bikes pre-82, but there's some talk now that they'll uh, instigate another age group for the pre-95 bikes as well. There's Graham Russell in that beautiful Eddie Lawson replica Kawasaki. That bike is a true picture. And just up in front of him is Neville Hughes on the 72. Part of this huge field just working their way up into Boundary Street now. But out in the front, it's still the Suzuki leading the Honda. Turn left onto Leonard Street. Just uh, not pulling in at the Union Hotel, but taking the left-hander. Once again, you'll see a uh, wild and varied bunch of machines out there. Ducatis, Hondas, Suzukis. This is a Kawasaki. This is Graham Russell. And that is a very nice looking motor motorcycle. And have a look at the swing arm on it. It's a purpose built swing arm. It's an Eddie Lawson replica. And you probably got to scratch your head and think back a few years when Eddie Lawson rode a bike like that, but I can guarantee he did. Checkered flag comes out, 24, Chris McMeekin gets the win, but he's hounded all the way by uh, Neil Batchelor. Now in third place it'll be uh, Neville Hughes, fourth will go to Glenn Ormsby, and in fifth will be Kevin Orr. That's how they finish in the Post Classics, brought to you by Electronet. Tell us, tell us why, you, why you're here. I oh, just support, you know, Greymouth and all the local um, you know, racing, like Birdman Road. It's all I can afford to do on a shoestring budget, so it suits me down to the ground. And tell us a little bit about the bike. It's a Suzuki 1000? Yep. Um, pretty, uh, pretty basic, really. It's just had a set of CR carbs, a 33mm carb put, put on it, and the clutch, and it's a um, Wiseco 1100 kit. And it's pretty fast around here. Yeah, no, well, that's that's all it's done to it, so it's a pretty standard motor apart from that. Standard cams, it's just reliable, you know, it goes bloody good. Really enjoy it. And, like, under a minute lap time, so you'd be, you'd have your wits about you around here, a lot of right-hand corners. Yeah. Uh, it looks pretty dangerous, you don't want to fall off, do you? you know? <laughs>
All right, mate, congratulations. Well done. Oh, thank you. Thank you, sir. Well, this is Formula One, another big field here at the Greymouth Street Races. 20 years since the first event in 1989. And this is the creme de la creme. And once again, it's that man, Hank Randall, on the Honda Fireblade, the 04 version. Just got too much horsepower down the short chute, and he leads them into turn one. And he'll also lead them out onto the uh, Greymouth Car Centre straight. There he is, 76. Right in behind him, it is uh, bike number 12, and that's Chris Alley on the Suzuki. 32 in there is Daniel Ormsby, number 112 in there as well as Scott Sutherland. Watch two for Damien Perriton, number 147. You just see him in the back of the shot, along with Ricky Mackay. Now, Ricky Mackay had problems in the earlier race and uh, got tangled up with one of the bikes in the earlier Formula One races, but he's back and uh, competing with a vengeance. Just got a glimpse of Eric de Boer in the back of that field as well on the Kawasaki 400. So these are the creme de la creme. Remember, the yellow T-shirts are for the virgins on the circuit here if you like first timers hank randall isn't a first timer but i tell you what he knows about winning here just pulling away on that very very potent honda fireblade bike number 76 christchurch's hank randall second place still number 12 and that's christchurch's chris ellie Third place looks like it might be number 147 now, or just sneaking up. In fact, it's Daniel Ormsby, it's 147 in behind him. And that is Damien Perriton. So Ormsby's got up ahead of him. Then it's Ricky Mackay. Then I think we'd go back to number 112, Scott Sutherland. We saw him in the Bears race. But Randall leads it. Getting a little bit tight further down through the field. There's number 51, that's Ricky Mackay. There is Sutherland, there is Lee Munro. We saw him in the Bears race as well. Merv Orford in behind them. So there's quite a bunch back, second through about eighth, anybody's race. But at the front, it's all Hank Randall. Well, they've come out of the smoke-free straight. They're working their way up the Greymouth Car Centre straight now. Then they'll turn left into Herbert Street, round Greyford Corner. They'll turn right again into Leonard Street. You'll see the Union Hotel just in the back of the shot there. Big crowd watching the action here at Greymouth. Race started virtually as a bit of a bet between the local bank managers. You may remember 20 odd years ago there was a, a big flood down on the west coast in Greymouth Way and uh, well Arthur Foster went to the bank manager and said hey look I've got a great idea to uh, get some money for the town. We'll put on a street race. The bank manager said if you can do it you go for it, and it's made money ever since. White flag out, one to go. 76, Randall in the front. Just starting to pull away now. Second place man, still Chris Alley, looking fairly comfortable there in second. But there is a huge scrap going on for third, fourth and fifth. Ricky Mackay is in it, Daniel uh, Perriton is in it as well. So too is Scott Sutherland. And they are now starting to just chase down Chris Alley. So Alley might have to look to his laurels here. We're on the last lap. He's only got to stay in second place. He's not going to catch this man. This is Hank Randall. He works his way heading back towards uh, the main straight or the front straight again. And he'll see the chicken flag first. He'll turn onto the Kingsgate Hotel straight. Another right-hander here, dodging the hay bales. And chicken flag comes out. And it is Randall getting the win. Second place just in behind him there is Chris Alley. And in third place, it looks like Ricky Mackay has picked the pocket of Damien Perriton. So that's a good race for Ricky Mackay from Rolleston. Right in behind him, Daniel Ormsby. And the rest of the field coming down. There's David Rangi. There's Aaron Scott on the Kawasaki. So this big field funneling down. But Hank Randall, too good for them. Is the secret getting around here to get a good start? You're on the front row. You got a good start? It is. Um, you have to get out there first. There's only about four or five laps. And uh, if you don't get a good start and get behind people, it takes a lap for each person to get past normally. So uh, sometimes it just doesn't give you enough time. So yeah, very critical. Without being rude, there's more older generation riders here than there are, say, at Whanganui or, or at Pyra. Um, true. Uh, maybe it's too far for them to come down. Uh, maybe the nature of the circuit is very tight. Um, and Pyra and such, which I haven't done in Whanganui, are a bit more open than here. And also they've got a bit of the name base too. Um, so I'm not quite sure why the reason is, reason is, but yeah, the older generation are coming back out, aren't they? You know, <laughs> and I'm included in that. In this month's
Well, we're into the afternoon action here at Greymouth, the Greymouth Street Races for 2009, and this is the pre-63s. This is the uh, oldest class of motorcycle you'll see out there, but it doesn't mean they're slow. 52 is certainly not slow. That's Neville Wills. He won the first race in pre-63s, and he's gone into the front as they work their way through the first turn and down the smoke-free straight. So Neville Willis, the leader, out of Nelson on the BSA 500, the 1954 version. Second place man number 43, and that's Alan Bland from Christchurch on the Triton Twin. Now these guys have been battling it out. They certainly did in the previous race, and they're already starting to get away just a little bit uh, from the rest of the field. Adrian Walker would be up into third now in a pretty unusual, on a pretty unusual machine. That's an Air Mackey 350 from 1963. These two just starting to pull away a little bit. Beautiful machine, this 52 of Neville Willis's. It really is a museum piece, and it's fast as well. But it's got all it can handle from the uh, Triton Twin, the 1961 version of Alan Bland from Christchurch. These two getting away. It is still uh, Adrian Walker through in third place, and then I think it'd be number 170, and that's Dennis Ibitzer from Nelson on a BSA DBD 34 from 1959. And the thing about motorcycles, and classic motorcycles in particular, is because the riders sort of sit in a more upright stance, you can see every little bit of uh, body English, body movement, you'll see them twisting the throttle, you'll see them working the gears. Of course, on these older bikes, the gear shift on the right-hand side, not the left-hand side, so the braking on the left, gear shift on the right. Totally different to what uh, modern motorcyclists are used to with the Japanese bikes and the more modern European bikes. Now while these two are having a bit of a dice, number 132 is starting to just make inroads. It's Adrian Walker from Christchurch getting a little bit closer now to number 43, Ellen Bland. Down the Kingsgate Hotel straight they go once again. Oh, and just about an overshoot there. For, well, maybe the confidence just getting a little bit too much there for the 52 of um, Neville Willis from Nelson. And the BSA nearly was using our um, safety barriers. And that has brought number 43 right back into this, Ellen Bland. We've got Bland trying to set him up as they work their way down past the Union Hotel on the outside. He'll try and square the corner and drive up the inside of him. Hasn't quite got the legs to do it, I don't think. Now he's got to change tack a little bit. And once again, this is going to play into the hands of number 132, Adrian Walker, because while these two are dicing, and they are dicing, and once again, Willis just gets a little bit wide as they uh, head down um, the Smith City Strait. Around the inside of the low Super Liquor roundabout, that's where you'll find all the protection. And there is uh, the man in third place, and you can see for yourself he's getting closer, is Adrian Walker. But you get the feeling he might be going to run out of real estate because we've got the white flag out, so it's one to go here at Greymouth. Conditions getting much better in the afternoon. Bit of temperature up, it was freezing cold here this morning. Everyone wrapped up like it was a winter's day. But now the city has come alive as it has done for the past 20 years. The Greymouth Street Races, and this isn't over yet. Neville Willis in the front. Alan Bland just out breaking him, then just running himself a little bit wide. He sits in second place. And then it is bike number 132, and that's Adrian Walker from Christchurch on the Air Mackey. And in behind them, I think it is number 47 now. And that would be Joe Annan from Kaikoura. Might get a glimpse of Joe as we pan back to third place. There he is. And that's Adrian Walker. This is a battle at the front, though. Remember, they're running to the chicken flag this time. And uh, Alan Bland's going to have to try something pretty special. He's not going to be able to do it. They go round the inside of the roundabout, head down onto the Kingsgate uh, Hotel straight once again, get the chicken flag, and it is number 52. So he keeps his winning streak alive here in the Subway-sponsored 363 Classics. Neville Willis gets the win. In second place, it is Alan Bland. In third place, it'll be number 132, Adrian Walker. There is the race leader. No doubt they'll have a chat and a cup of tea about it in the ensuing break after the racing, because the pre-63 is certainly a sociable bunch. In this month's Bike Rider... This is the Formula 3 class brought to you by the Kingsgate Hotel of Greymouth. They sponsored the front straight. That's where the bikes are heading at the moment and it is bike number 28 in the front and that is Brian Hill. Slotting in behind him is Neil Smith. Scott Moyer in there as well. I said Scott Moyer was doing double duty because he's in the super motards but he's riding an interesting machine in Formula 3. It's essentially a 125 Honda Grand Prix motorcycle frame with a CRF 450 Honda motocross single cylinder engine. 
shoehorned into it. He's sort of following in the, st in the footsteps of Jason Eason. Jason Eason has done this for a, a few seasons now with his little TIG craft, firstly with a Yamaha engine and now with a uh, Aprilia motor. With Scott Moyer, Honda all the way, that's him sitting in fourth place. Out in the front, still number 28, that's Brian Hill. And she's hounded all the way by Neil Smith. These two have been uh, together in the first race we showed you in Formula 3 as well. On the giant killing performance machine in Formula 3, not only here at Greymouth, but right throughout the National Title Series as well, and that is the SV650 Suzuki. Just got a glimpse there of the Kawasaki. Now I'm picking that that'll be Eric De Boer on the Colin Klein Motorcycles KX400. There he is, just in the back of the shot. In fact, just behind Scott Moyer now. And number nine, just in front of Moyer, is uh, Robbie Stokes on yet another SV650 Suzuki. They are the bike to have, not only in the uh, Pro Twins that you'll see in the Castrol Power One New Zealand Road Racing Championship, but also in the Formula 3 class. There is Stokes. He's about to be monstered by Scott Moyer. Moyer would have the advantage, I would think, in the handling. The nippy little 125 Grand Prix bike. But for out-and-out -out pace and reliability, you can't beat the SV650 Suzuki's of number 28. Brian Hill and number seven, Neil Smith. That's the order as they come down the Kingsgate Strait once again. They turn right into the Smoke Free Strait. They turn right again into the Greymouth Car Centre Strait. Bike number 79 there was Clint Sylvester. As we go back to the front of the field. Hill continues to lead, and if anything, he's just started to stretch away a little bit. Moving up there is Eric De Boer from the West Coast. There he is on bike number three, the green Kawasaki. He's moving into third place now. Moyer's gone back a couple of spots. But it's still the 28 of Hill leading uh, Smith. Both of those guys on uh, SV650 Suzuki's. Essentially a road-going machine. Then it's a Colin Klein motorcycle sponsored Eric De Boer. Then it was Scott Moyer. White flag out. You get the feeling that these four or five are going to argue about the main spots. Bike number 133 there is Chris Wallinger from Blenheim. As we go back to the front of the field. Eric De Boer having a good long look at Scott Moyer as they head their way up into the Grey Ford corner. So Moyer is fighting for his life here. Here comes a challenge from De Boer. Moore, remember, on the hybrid, De Boer goes up the inside of him on the Kawasaki and slots into third place. So this is the last lap for the Kingsgate Hotel, Greymouth, Formula 3, race two for them for the weekend. This man's going to take it out, Brian Hill, on the SB650 Suzuki. The man from Ashburton is going to get the win. In second place, it will be a similar machine in the hands of Blenheim's Neil Smith. And in third place, it will be number uh, three, and that is Eric De Boer from Westport. So that's how they finished in the Kingsgate Hotel, Greymouth, Formula 3. Here's this week to the streets of Greymouth for their 20th annual motorcycle event. Well, once again, we are into the Super Motard action here, brought to you by Hughes Motor Services. Watch for number 007, that's Mitch Rowe down on the inside. Watch through for number 11, Scott Moore. Didn't get the very best of the starts. Tell you someone who did, and that was number 223, and that was Scotty Birch. But it is Moyer on the Aprilia that goes through turn number one in the front. Now, where was Duncan Hart? He's been... Uh, Pretty quick, pretty consistent here all afternoon at Greymouth. There he is up into about third place now. Make it second. Just goes past Mitch Rowe. Oh, number zero. Just uh, overshooting himself, outbreaking himself. Heath Boddicker from Nelson on the KTM. Oh, and a bit of a moment there for Duncan Hart too. Put his foot down. In fact, it was Mitch Rowe, Duncan Hart now up in the second place. Scott Moyer getting away on the Aprilia. That's the V-Twin, the 550. Remember, two classes in one here at Supermotard, S1 and S2. Aprilia, Yamaha and KTM, the order at the moment. The Aprilia of Scott Moy, there he is. As he comes out of Frederick Street and back onto Boundary Street and back onto the course proper after taking on the Ferguson Brothers off-road section. 11, Scott Moyer, first full season on the Aprilia Supermotard bike. Raced a KTM before that, Duncan Hart threw in second place. A stalwart of the Yamaha brand, that's him in second, bike number 86. Then it's Scott Birch from Rotorua on another KTM, 007, 007, Mitch Rowe in fourth. And I think we might go back to Matt Wells from 
The South from Timaru on the Honda, I think might be the next one through. And also Darcy Prendergast is in there as well, number 71. But these three battling out for the podium positions. Birch is latched onto the back of Duncan Hart here. As I mentioned before, Hart getting his start in Super Motard at the Greymouth Street Races. That was two or three years ago now. He's gone on to be one of the top contenders in this very popular class. And Scott Moyer fast becoming one of the top contenders as well. He's heading off to do the Suzuki Tri-Series and you'll see them at Whanganui at the Cemetery Circuit. And also I would suggest at the Pyra Street Races as well, bike number 11, Scott Moyer. There he is, the Aprilia 550. This is a similar bike to the one that uh, Daryl Atkins rode at the Cemetery Circuit last year and stomped all the competition. 242, Scott Baird from Dunedin. He probably would have liked to have had a better race because he's struggling a little bit. This is the first three, very sideways there with Scott Birch just backing it into the corners. But he can't make an impression on Duncan Hart. And while these two are just battling a little bit, Moyer starting to get away. There's a bit of a spectre hanging over the head of Scott Moyer because they have had brake problems with the Aprilia. Real problems with the front brake. We saw him in an earlier race have to pull up. It was all he could do to pull up. The dirt section will be no problem for these three. Moyer, a nationally ranked motocrosser, top 10 ranked motocrosser for the last few seasons. Also very accomplished on the road, races the 600 sports production class, also Formula 3 and also Supermotar. So he's a busy man. Oh, someone's come down. I've got a feeling that this is Mauritius Rose from Christchurch on the KTM. White flag out, last lap for Scott Moyer. Foot down as he works his way into the right-hander. Then he grabs a handful of throttle to keep Duncan Hart behind him. Scott Birch lurking in third. Then there's a huge gap back to the fourth place man. Still should be 007, and that is Mitch Rowe. He's number zero, that was Heath Bodica. He's the one that outbraked himself a little earlier on. There's uh, Nigel Curtis again, our one armed man, number 35. We go back to the front of the field. Remember, they're going to the flag this time. Birch has got himself up in the second place, so he snuck up the inside of Duncan Hart. Hart tries to go around the outside. He's going to pay the price for that. We go back to the dirt section, number six. Oh, is he going to play a part in this, whether he wants to or not? This is Mauritius Ruse from Christchurch. He crashed on the last lap. The leaders are right on him. There is number 71, that's Darcy Prendergast. He'd be uh, in the battle for the miners now on the XR650. We go back to the front of the field. And Duncan Hart plays, pays the price here just a little bit. Maybe he was caught up behind Ruse because he's a distant third. 11, Scott Moyer's going to win it. Scott Birch has got to be content with second this time. He couldn't get up and challenge his good friend Scott Moyer. And in third place it is Duncan Hart. Fourth place will be number 007 and that is Mitch Rowe. And right in behind him it will be number 14 and that's Malcolm Wells. Next one through would be number 331, and that is Dean Lloyd from Taupo, and behind him, 71, and that is Darcy Prendergast. Good recovery from number zero, Heath Bonica, after having problems in the early going. In this month's